It is a stormy Oklahoma evening in 1955, and you are about to turn off the light when the rain stops, and then you begin to hear it, a soft roar in the distance. You open the curtains. The entire sky is illuminated with lightning, crackling across the clouds dozens of times a second, and a massive tornado, at least 500 feet across, is headed right toward your town, and it's glowing blue. On the morning of May 25, 1955, tornadoes would begin spawning in northern Texas, Oklahoma, and southern Kansas. It was the 1955 tornado outbreak. In 24 hours, a total of 19 tornadoes would form across the region. That night, a very powerful supercell would form two tornadoes, one over Blackwell, Oklahoma, and another over Udall, Kansas. They would both become infamous for their power and for their strange behavior. Multiple survivors of the Blackwell tornado reported bizarre electrical phenomena. Floyd Montgomery, a weather observer in Blackwell, published his and several others' reports in the monthly weather review. I stood in the door of my storm cellar and watched the storm go through town. The wind at my place was a dead calm. The storm sounded like a roaring freight train going through an open country, only louder. As the funnel was directly east of me, the fire up near the top of the funnel looked like a child's Fourth of July pinwheel. It was something I will not forget for a long time. In a personal communication, he would later write, As near as I can explain, I would say that the light was the same color as an electric arc welder, but very much brighter. The light was so intense that I had to look away when there were no clouds in front, like a beacon in a lighthouse. Lee Hunter, who witnessed this same tornado a few miles north of Blackwell, gave this report to Montgomery. The funnel from the cloud to the ground was lit up. It was a steady, deep blue light, very bright. It had an orange color fire in the center, from the cloud to the ground. It looked like a giant neon tube. As it swung along the ground, the orange fire, or electricity, would gush out from the bottom of the funnel, causing a terrific light. Other witnesses described electricity, red in color, rising up from the ground in the path of the tornado. Independent of Montgomery's report, electric field monitoring stations, run by Dr. Ross Gunn of the United States Weather Bureau near Udall, reported rapid changes in the electric field equal to hundreds of volts per meter per second when the supercell passed through an hour later and spawned another tornado over that town. The supercell that hit the towns of Blackwell and Udall was undeniably powerful. The two tornadoes spawned over that area were both rated F5, and the Udall tornado especially was so devastating that the Weather Bureau considered rating it an F6. For decades afterward, that name Udall could not be spoken in Kansas without conjuring sorrow. Nearly every building was razed, and 20% of the town's population was killed, and it is still the deadliest tornado in Kansas history. In this video, a survivor of that tornado tells the story of how it struck his house with his family inside. Doing some digging, I found other accounts of similarly electric tornadoes. Reported in the magazine Weatherwise in 1951 was of a tornado in Texas. A naval captain described being inside a tornado and that it was partially filled with a bright cloud which shimmered like a fluorescent light. In the 1873 book The Atmosphere by Camille Flammarion, there is a reproduction of an observation from 1806 taken by a Professor de Brun just outside Paris. About 20 minutes after the formation of this whirlwind, I saw a second one which was far more majestic in appearance. It was of a grayish hue and was traversed from top to bottom by a tube as luminous as the moon. In that same book, an 1822 tornado in Assenval was described thus. A thick vapor with the bluish hue of burning sulfur was seen to descend from this cloud. Several persons remarked that the circular progress of the trumpet, its sulfurous hue, and the focus of flaming fire which issued from with the sparks of bituminous vapor. Tornadoes and lightning do go hand in hand. In fact, driven by stories like this, for many years the hypothesis behind tornado formation was that lightning heated the air and caused it to rise rapidly. Our current understanding switches that around. Lightning is caused by updrafts, as ice crystals of different weights blow past each other in the cloud. Tornadoes are simply strong, local, and rotating updrafts. The same thing that powers tornadoes also powers lightning. The red sparks in front of the tornado were most likely St. Elmo's fire, St. Elmo's fire is a type of visible coronal discharge. In this case, the air near the ground was being ionized by the strong electric field between the cloud and the ground present in the lightning storm. In this infamous picture, the same kind of electric field is causing the boy's hair to stand on end. They were struck by lightning moments later. 
As for the cause of the glowing core of the tornado, I would suspect that it was the static discharge of dust and debris blowing around in the condensation funnel, creating much friction in the incredibly fast winds of this tornado. The clear cloud base and late time of the tornado would have made the phenomena especially clear. However, I qualify this statement by saying that I am just a bored meteorology student and not an expert in tornado dynamics. Regardless, that's all for me. I hope you found this topic as interesting as I did, and I will see you again some other time. Cheers.